Thank you, Neil. That, that was terrific. I'm going to uh, do one thing for one second, because I didn't want to bump it with the memoriam. I'd like to welcome our new members, at least one of whom is here. Um, I think Charles Strum is here. Charles, where are you? He was with the New York Times from 79 to 2014, Metro Editor, New Jersey Bureau Chief, Obituaries Editor, National Deputy Editor, and an AME. Anyway, welcome. Bert Shannis, are you here? He also was a reporter with the Daily News, an editor with the Daily News. And Myra Forsberg, are you here? Uh, she was an editor at the Times in various departments, especially cultural, for many years. And anyway, welcome to all of you. Now we'll go back to Neil. And in honor of my late mother, I'm going to ask the first question because I was not allowed to talk to her when the news hour was on. Um, I think that, that even though you say you don't take any position, by having two anchors, which are, I guess, the biggest outlet, who are women, that you make one of the most important statements that uh, is being made in journalism. And I'd like you to talk about women in journalism and um, whether there's more you can do to fly the flag or just keep the ratings going up for them. Well, you know, I'm delighted to have both of them. I've known both of them for a long time. They are great journalists. And I think the most important thing to say about them, they are great journalists who happen to be women. They didn't get the job because they're women. They got the job because they're great broadcasters. But I will say, you know, the difference between, as I look around, and, and I think we, I'm proud of a lot of the young people we have um, who are both women and, and, and a lot of members of uh, diverse audiences to try to grow those people up and make sure that um, a news organization will only be as good uh, as it, when it reflects the audience it serves. Right? And there's no doubt that um, women are a larger share of the audience. Increasingly, they play a bigger role. And we were doing a disservice to our audience and a disservice to ourselves when newsrooms were all, all male. I think about a lot of... Um, women who are a bit older than I who started in the business as uh, secretaries. And men didn't. Men started in clerical, you know, other jobs. Men were allowed to be assistant producers and so forth. Women had to do that. What I think is refreshing as I look around is more and more of the younger women I see come in at any job just like men do. Um, you know, and I think on the younger ranks I see tremendous, tremendous growth. Okay. Um, no. You can shout the question. I okay, and how, there we go. Okay, we're going to start with a woman. I know that's an odd thing here. <laughs> she may introduce herself, please. Uh, yeah, Marlene Sanders, former broadcaster. Uh, um, speaking of some women pioneers. <laughs> uh, I've been looking in vain for the last few years at Channel 13 to find any documentaries produced in-house. And I note that the two you do air come from Boston, and recent news reports say that you will thinking of either moving them to Channel 21 or to some uh, slot in virtual Siberia. Uh, so my question is, what is the fate of documentaries uh, locally, and how does that fit into your image of what public television is supposed to be doing? Um, good question. So let me just, let me just uh, being a reporter, correct the facts. So the, the question about documentaries was, and, we're, and we're, we thought we had a way to increase the audience for documentaries, not decrease it. That we thought instead of running it twice, premiering on Channel 21 would have Masterpiece Theater as a lead-in, which we thought would be better than Antiques Roadshow, and running it on Sunday nights, uh, not in Siberia, but on Channel 13 after Downton Abbey was our best lead-in. So I actually thought it was a way to get a bigger audience. And I think we're probably not going to do that. We're probably going to experiment with six nights with something else. And it was an attempt to put more arts on, not, not, uh, not exile uh, indies. We're a big believer in indie film. We are a lot of it. The two series you talk about are actually a, um, a combination of films, not by GBH. Independent Lens and POV are independent filmmakers all over the place. Um, we do a lot of independent films. A lot of the, a lot, most of the long form films you see in arts and our series and great performances or nature and, um, are done by independent filmmakers, not by staff, not by staff producers. Um, and we do a, we have a bunch of uh, independent films in the works. The biggest chunk of those, Independent Lens and POV, own Monday night at 10. So that's taken up by a separate consortium, which is separately funded. I would love to do more independent films. Oftentimes what we do, because m raising money is so hard and these films are so expensive, is we end up raising some of the money and independent producers raise the balance of it. I would love to do more in-house, and we're trying to think of some projects which might lend it to that. Oh, 
Thanks. Uh, David Tereschuk, a uh, correspondent for one of, your, one of your own shows, Religion and Ethics News Weekly. And to echo, echo you, it's the kind of program that would just never be made by commercial television. Exactly right. I have a question, though, about uh, I, I was resonating to your, uh, ec you know, recalling the, the differences between print and television. And I, I certainly felt the same way in my time. But, but I have a question, really, um, about the, I guess, the multimedia nature of competitiveness now. Pulitzer Prizes yesterday, one goes to our own hometown newspaper, but uh, what's cited is the video that the newspaper made. Any thoughts about that in our day? I think, uh, you know, I think there's things you can't stand in front of. Um, you know, there are people I know who still think film looks better than videotape, but so what? I um, mean, there are people I still think that think professional cameras look better than some of the smaller cameras, but it is what it is. Um, I think where journalism is going to, instead of bemoaning the fact that um, it's hard to do just one thing, and increasingly today's journalists are going to have to do everything. I think that's not the challenge. I think that's the way it is. I think the challenge is to say, can we use all those platforms for smart things? The, down, the upside of having people who can file media on all platforms is news gets out faster. Right? It's not bad, necessarily. If, 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 the thing, if you could report right away, there's a closing on the George Washington Bridge, something going on in New Jersey, and you get that out right away, that's a public service. If that's the only thing you report, and there's no other digging to find out what's going on, that's a bad thing. I think it's important that for people to do long form stuff, if they're increasingly doing short form stuff, that we don't lose that. You know, the most important thing of anything that we can lose, I think, is the kind of digging investigative function. That's the hardest thing to replace. And so what I'm most concerned of in any media that we don't lose that. Um, but I also think even those things would be, a greater good would be done if they could figure out how to get their work seen more widely. Um, I know a lot of investigative journalists who don't really care about social media or think about it. And the downside of that is not as many people are seeing their great work. Uh, Myron Candell, I have <clears throat> one observation. Could you open your jacket and show us what's holding up your pants? Just checking. Okay. It's the real, uh, real me. Uh, that my question really goes back a long way to Channel 13. New York is the financial capital of the world. It was very ironic to those of us in financial journalism that Wall Street Week, which was a pioneer uh, in the area, came out of that financial capital of the world, Owings Mills, Maryland. Uh, the nightly business report, which you carry, comes out of, or originally came out of Miami, Florida. Uh, except for um, Consuela Mack on Channel 21, uh, relegated to 21, not 13, you don't have anything currently on, uh, originally, uh, on business and financial news, which arguably has been the big story of our time. How are you going to solve that? Uh, it's a good question. There's one thing we've done since that, since the, the days of uh, Nightly Business Report, which now is a nightly show at 6.30, and it's done out of New York. So we do have a nightly presence out of New York now. But that's not enough. Um, and we are doing, you've seen increasingly more front lines focused on the financial issue. We're going to do more. Um, Marlene asked me about documentaries. We're, we're trying to raise money right now to do a long series of long-form documentaries on the notion of poverty and in income inequality. Um, and that is clearly, I think, heading towards being the biggest domestic issue in this campaign. And there are a lot of interesting thoughts about it. The Republicans and Democrats each trying to stake out positions about it. As you know, different views in academics about what's inevitable. Is the answer larger government? Is the answer smaller government? Is the answer more individual responsibility? Is the answer more individual intervention? So we want to get some real point of view documentaries lined up. As in many things in public TV, um, the more resources we raise, the more successful we'll be in doing that. Uh, a hard question. Uh, Michael Serrell, uh, X Time Business Week, uh, Bloomberg. Um, uh, politics and Congress and the new Republican Congress. Ever since the Nixon administration, PBS has been a whipping boy for conservatives who say it's a, a liberal icon uh, and and a voice for liberalism. Uh, my observation is that uh, you've striven hard to be neutral on most social and political issues. I also observe that I think you've failed <laughs> to, uh, 
to the extent that you haven't put any shows on that oppose gay rights uh, or that are on the opposite side of uh, some of the liberal issues. Rather, uh, my observation is that you become more neutral and less inclined to engage in political, politically controversial topics. Can you comment? Uh, yeah, I think there are two, when you unpack that question, I think there are two parts of it. Let me do the second part first. Um, I, think, I, I think I disagree that um, it may be true in the documentary world, you may not see any, any long form documentaries that are, quote, against gay rights. Um, but we haven't done them on the other side either. I think we, we will see a lot of vigorous debate about it. And the news hours had lots of vigorous debates about the issue of gay rights and whether it's a civil right or a legal right. Um, I think there's been no shortage of that. Um, I think we've done stories on Frontline about the kind of what's behind those movements. Um, you know, I think there are some things where, uh, and this may be um, where it's harder to find the opposite point of view. Like we've done, we've done uh, documentaries about the evils of obesity. We haven't done pro-obesity documentaries. <laughs> We've done documents about the evils of being illiterate. We haven't done pro-illiterate documentaries. So there are some things where there's aren't, there really aren't, there's societal, we agree societal, a mutual goal. Um, and in the documentary world, you know, as I, as I think this question goes, those are independent documentaries, and we are working hard to say, uh, as I mentioned on, on income inequality, can we find different points of view from all across the spectrum? Um, I find a lot of this is in the eye of the beholder, and we do an awful lot of programming, so people can certainly find a program or two that they disagree with. I think if you look at the spectrum, I think we've done a pretty good job. Can we do better? Absolutely. Um, and I, I, that's why I want to find filmmakers of all stripes. On the point about what's going to happen in politics, nobody, you know, as Sam Goldwyn once said about Hollywood, nobody knows anything. Um, I think that Governor Romney may have proved that sort of running against PBS is not such a great idea, that it may be fodder and red meat for certain groups. But when you actually look at it, even in districts which are very red, there's a good blue-sized chunk of that district which likes public media, which likes NPR, which likes PBS. Um, and to run against the news hour and run against Sesame Street may not be great politics. Uh, Linda gets homes from uh, the Silurians. Uh, what do you think NBC is going to do about Brian Williams? And what would you do if you were still the president of NBC? All right. You know, one of the, one, um, people ask me all the time, do I miss my days running NBC News? <laughs> and the question I get remind me how much I don't miss those days. Um, you know, I will say this. I'm, I, I, having been at NBC during crises like these, I do know that it looks very different on the inside than it does on the outside. Um, and I think NBC has been pretty clear that there's a process, that there's a team that's investigating the story. And it'll be wrong of anybody, I think, especially people from the outside to kind of prejudge whatever that will be. I do say that I think this is, you know, I, feel, I know Brian, I know his family, I feel bad for them. I feel very bad for the people of NBC News who work hard, you know, hard-driving journalists who feel their integrity um, is called into question. And I feel bad for the whole industry because for people who don't value what we do, this becomes shorthand for there they go again and you can't trust them. Andy, hang on. That's right. Yeah, I think that's the most answer you're going to get. I mean, real honestly, I, I would have no business judging what I would do. I, I would, it's, you have to know the whole complex of the story. I think it's difficult, so I don't, I don't really know. It would be fair to me to have a judgment. Just like, you know what, whatever issues I have at, at, at 13, I really don't want some other media executive telling me what they think they would do until they know what the facts are. Yes, uh, my name is Andy Fisher. You and I were at NBC at the same time. My brother went to Tufts, and I even worked for the Knickerbocker News. Wow. So I won't ask about anything that involves those entities. Um, who writes the promos that you do for Cinema 13? Uh, mostly I do. They're brilliant. <laughs> and I'm glad I gave that answer. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like being in front of the camera, by the way? Hmm? How do you like being in front of the camera? You know, so for years, for 25 years, I used to, I was my job to whisper in other people's ear, right? And I now realize how, how unhelpful it is for, say, do that better. Um, so I think, I've, it's, I think it's harder than I thought, and I'm trying to get better at it, but I still think it's pretty tough. 
Is your harshest critic your wife, who is really good at uh, golf? You know, I gotta tell you. So I, I, I come home and she goes, you know, I think you should drop your voice a little more and project a little bit more. You know, <laughs> you know, honey, you know, most husbands come home and they're on TV. Their wife goes, oh, it was so great. I saw you on TV. I'm so proud of you. And you know, I get a little more in your diaphragm, and I think you need to lower your eye line a little bit. So. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Bill Deal, ABC News Radio. Are the days of the evening news? Uh, on the wane, do you think? Uh, people keep saying that uh, all the commercials are for people who are 65 and over. How long can they last? Uh, I grew up in the days of Bill Butel and uh, Roger Grimsby and Peter Jennings, and you worked with him. Where's it going to go? What, what's going to happen in five, 10 years? Will there still be an evening news show? I think, uh, first, I think there'll still be something. And while it's true the audience has gone down considerably from the days when I worked there, there are still millions of people who watch these shows, maybe 20 or 30 million people altogether. That is not a small audience. I think the shows may change, and you're starting to see them change. I, mean, there's a, I think David Muir at ABC News has a little bit different personality to, to World News Tonight. Um, I think Brian and Lester now have a little bit different personality, and CBS is much more of a traditional show. I think they will try to move things around. I mean, more and more those shows recognize that you don't come to them to know just what happened today. Some people do. For the most part, it's harder and harder to come to that show not knowing anything. Right? Now your phone lights up with them and there are big stories. I do think what they're still very good at is saying, look, if I only had 28 minutes today, I barely looked at the paper, I really didn't know, I want, and I want some sense of what happened, and I want some insight about what it means. Um, I still think the evening news performs a valuable function in that. And the other thing I think that they do is, God forbid, the next big stories that happen, there's still a place where you need a big, massive, um, journalistic investment to kind of tell you what's going on. And I still think the three broadcast networks, some of the big cable networks, are going to have a valuable public service role to play in that. Do you ever worry about Charlie Rose keeling over? <laughs> you know, Charlie tells me he's going to be at this job until we wheel him out, and he hopes, and that's not going to happen anytime soon. And I'm sure he's telling the guys at CBS the same yeah. thing, and at Bloomberg. And Neil, you were just great. I'm, um, if uh, we could get a Salorian to write a $5 million check for you, which I would count, hold your breath on, uh, <laughs> what would you allocate that money to in terms of what you would want to cover more in the news? Well, I'll tell you the thing we're, we're um, and we haven't announced it, but I'll tell you, tell you guys. Um, in September, we're going to take our show Metro Focus, which is a, uh, just a half hour show and make it a daily show and run it four or five times a day. And the idea is to, take, to make up for what I think local news doesn't do in this town which is to cover the issues that are really important. So, you know, to cover things like education and equal justice and poverty and housing um, and pictures which, and, and finance and pictures which are not necessarily rich in picture but important in terms of where our city's going. Uh, and I look, as I look around, I say, you know what, um, there's so many people who just watch local news and come away with faux investigations, the crime of the day, um, and traffic and sports, and there's got to be more to our great city than that. I'm, I'm happy to say uh, that uh, I forgot to thank one other person here, many other people probably, but especially Fred Herzog. Fred, where are you? Please stand. He's the man who sends you all those uh, emails and stuff, and uh, he doesn't yet know this, but later today I'm going to send him the press release about the Silurians Awards dinner on May 19th, and I bring this up now because I'm happy to announce that, and this wasn't fixed, that Metro Focus is, a, is one of our award winners That's right. um, for a very good story. And uh, you'll read more about it when you get the email once I send it to Fred. Anyway, um, we have a little ritual here now. That, uh, if you hold this for one sec. I know Mort Scheinman gave me this. Here we go. Our way of thanking you is to please ask you to be a member of the Salurians. Thank you. There is your membership card. And I, I really think we do need an encore uh, for the camera, because I know Bill Deal is a little slow with the, su go. with the suspenders, though. We've we got to see those suspenders one more time. There you go. That, now, that's what I call a, a gentlemanly, you know, G-rated flash. That's right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Neil. All right. Thank you. So we'll, we'll see you all May 19th for our awards dinner, and uh, you'll see, hear more about it on the Internet. No, or from us, by email.